everyone, it's Wallace from School Rubric, and with us today we have Narda Pitkethli, who is the founder and chief executive officer of the Nardagani Reading Program, a symbol-based program that helps associate difficult to pronounce sounds in words for readers. The Nardagani Reading Program is inspired by the Japanese system called hiragana, which Narda herself employed to learn Japanese after moving abroad after college. Narda's reading program was featured at a 2017 TEDx event and she has also recently released her memoir, Nardagani and Memoir, Finding Light in the Shadow of a Brother's Disappearance. Nardo, we really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you, Wallace. I'm very happy to be here. For those folks who have perhaps not listened to your TED Talk or have firsthand experience with your reading program, what exactly is the Nardagani Reading Program? Well, it is a symbols-based program, like you said, and it's been, it was inspired by the Japanese hiragana system. The Japanese have one of the highest literacy rates in the world. Even though they have 2,000 complicated kanji, it looks pretty complicated, it is pretty complicated, and hundreds of years ago, they developed a system called hiragana where they have a simple symbol that represents each sound in their language that live underneath the kanji. That's why I was able to learn it very easily because it's, they made it easy to, to memorize, the symbols are easy. So what I did was I adapted the Japanese system to English. And the reason I did that is because English, we only have 26 letters, but it's a very complicated language. The reason it's complicated is of the 26 letters, 12 play fair. They only make one sound. Those are the easy ones. The other 14 letters make multiple sounds. The vowels especially can make four and five different sounds. The A makes four sounds. So it's very complicated. And so I developed, I was able to keep it to 12 simple symbols that are squares and lines and dots and kind of, but they're fun and I have ways to memorize them easily for the sounds that uh, for the letters that don't play fair so it's easy to understand to learn to sound out words you use these symbols underneath the letter the, the words don't change at all they just have symbols underneath so that you can easily understand the sound the the word is making the letter is making that's an amazing story. Thank you so much for sharing that. And before we move on to the next question, we just want to remind everyone to click on like and subscribe below to keep up to date on our latest videos and content from School of Rubric and leading voices such as Narda in education around the world. Narda, I'm curious to know about some of the growth with your reading program, particularly as I understand in 2012, it was approved by the Idaho State Department of Education. What are some of the future expansion plans have you seen any uptick in usage as a result of COVID and more stay-at-home learning? Well, it was uh, no small feat getting adopted by the, approved by the Idaho State Department of Education. Once we accomplished that, it was interesting because the symbols underneath the letters are so foreign to people that we really couldn't gain much traction for a very long time, though we tried until my TEDx talk in 2017. Once I did that, people could see in less than 10 minutes a terrific overview of how the program works and suddenly we were gaining traction. We were having people um, help us and we were able to 100% digitize the program. And a little over a year ago, we launched the digital program so that we could reach people worldwide. Now people can simply go on our website, purchase the program for $29 for a month at a time, and we're reaching people worldwide. It's been fantastic, and especially with COVID, a lot of, a lot of people want to teach their own kids to read, homeschoolers, and we built in a teacher training, and people can buy the program, go through a two-hour teacher training, we call it three hours in case they need a little more time, then they're ready to teach their child to read or their student. And tutors are picking this up and teaching English. So we've had 
terrific growth since we digitized the program a little over a year ago. And especially with COVID, now people are looking for online solutions that are simple and straightforward, parents and teachers. Right, it sounds like an amazing resource and um, really happy to hear that you're out there and offering that product and service to help people learn how to read better. You know, Narda, I worked as a school administrator for a number of years and, you know, I found that there was no shortage of reading programs and interventions that emphasize mm -hmm. phonics, phonemes, one-on-one -on -one instruction, large group instruction, small group instruction. And I'm curious how you view the Nardagani program. Is it a replacement to these programs? Is it a supplement or is it kind of a last resort if and when these interventions have proven to be unsuccessful? Well, when we were approved by the Idaho State, State Department of Education, it was really approved for um, an intervention when nothing else worked. But what we're finding is that I've been told that of these hundreds of reading programs, that mostly they are developed by teachers. And teachers are mired in rules and exceptions and combining letters and blends and that we really needed somebody outside of the education industry to come in and create something that was very simple. And I, I'm an artist by, my background is in the arts, glass blowing in particular. You can see kind of my living room. I got lots of glass around that I um, help create. And so I, I don't remember even learning how to read. And, so really, it's me coming in from the outside. There's no rules except to, to read the symbol underneath, sound out the symbol under the word. There's no exceptions. There's no combining letters or blends unless you absolutely have to, like the SH and the CH, you have to combine those two. So it's a very simple way for people to learn to read. And it's reaching, we teach you know three and a half year olds all the way up to, um, people who are in their 70s are learning to read for the first time in their life. So it's very different and um, it can be used as a remedial reading program when nothing else works or it can just be how you start teaching your kids. And that kind of leads me to my next question because I remember from the TED talk, I know you talked a little bit about prison illiteracy rates and then I think there was also an example of a fifth grader who had autism and had difficulty reading and achieving success with the program. I'm just a little curious though, is there a certain demographic or type of learner that your program is particularly effective with? We have found it by teaching, we've done a lot of, conducted a lot of pilot programs in schools and prisons and jails. And so far we're, we're about a 96% success rate. And we teach, people of all, all ages, like I said, starting at three and a half years old, and all backgrounds. We work with people learning English as a first language when they, you know, they're in fifth grade, they're in high school, they're getting ready to graduate, they're still not reading. We teach a lot of students, and then students who are learning English as a second language or third language. We have, um, not only do we teach reading, but a lot of English as a second language students can read and write, but their pronunciation is very uh, not so good because of, again, these vowels that make so many different sounds. Once they go through our program, we have a pronunciation piece where we can teach them. These are the different sounds of E. They're like, oh my gosh, in my language, we only have one sound of E. And here in English, I never realized that was part of why I wasn't pronouncing it correctly because I was only pronouncing my own sound. And then they, they learn through our pronunciation program how to correctly pronounce English. Right, and you know, I was, let's talk a little bit about maybe efficacy of the program and how effective kind of it, it, it really is. I know when I look through your website, there's a number of testimonials on your webpage. I know you have a lot of stories and anecdotes. Um, and I also know that there's a reference to a small scale teacher research study that was conducted by Dr. Jeffrey Wilhelm who's a professor of English education at Boise State University, and is also part of your advisory board. I'm kind of curious if you have any further plans to validate and compare this method 
to other literacy and reading programs through studies, research, or other peer-reviewed publications? That's what we're working on now. Um, last year, uh, late last year, there was a study done in India, um, a very bright woman with a couple schools. She uh, conducted a research study with small scale research study with uh, five-year-olds and also seventh graders to see how it worked with English as a second language and it was highly successful. We are going into a school district in Southern Idaho next month when school starts, whether they start in person or online. And we will be uh, conducting a research study that's gonna have over 100 students. And we also have a doctoral student who's conducting a, a research study for her thesis. And we encourage anybody who wants to do that. We, this is the time to really be publishing reports so that, so that we can show people what, what we're doing and how effective the program is, especially compared to the other programs that are out there. Good question. Yeah, thanks for that. And we'll look forward to that. And we appreciate you sharing that. Um, let's talk a little bit more about kind of the, the, the company and the history and how it was formed, because I know 10 years is a pretty long time to work on a dream. And you were working on this for 10 years before it really kind of took off. And I think in that time, a lot of people might have given up. But not only did you persevere, you did so through starting a few other businesses, such as a window washing company, such as a food recycling company. And I'm really impressed and in awe. And I'd like to know, how did you find that resilience and what made you believe that it was worth the effort? Well, I have, um, that's, a, that's also a very good question because I knew there was a need. I knew that, I know that illiteracy is the number one predictor of future criminal activity. And there's a real problem in that, in that area. And uh, had some personal experience with that. And every time I tried to get away from this startup, which comes with a lot of um, real difficulties with just my everyday life, I would have, I'd have a parent call me and say, oh my gosh, my child isn't reading at grade level. Could you help? You know, I'd say, okay, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll, I'll teach them to read. And in the program, it just doesn't take very long. Within the first couple lessons, they're reading our coded practice books and they're so excited, like Sven on the TEDx talk. And it would just pull me right back in. And I'd just be like, I would just say, okay, here we go. Yes, I needed to create businesses where I could sustain myself and have a roof over my head and, and food to eat. So I created several businesses when I had to, but really the, my main passion was the reading program and teaching people to read. And I, I just knew that we would get to a point where we could digitize it and it could take off and it could help you know, more, many more people than just me teaching one-offs. So again, I, I would give up, but then I would, someone would call me the next day and say, let's step up for a, for, teaching my child. And then I would be right back in there knowing, oh my gosh, this works so well, so quickly. I can't give up. And my mantra was, I can do hard things. Amazing mantra, amazing advice, and great example for all the entrepreneurs out there trying to chase a dream and something that they believe in. And that maybe turns my, our attention a little bit to your book, which was released last year. Um, and I know it's very personal, it's a memoir, and it unveils some of the grief and agony uh, behind your brother's disappearance, but also some of your life journeys and lessons along the way. Um, what inspired you to write the book and share uh, such personal stories? And what are some lessons or messages that you hope readers walk away with? Well, the disappearance of my brother had, uh, was, a, was a really tragic time in this small community where I live. Um, he was well loved and well known, and my best friend. And there was there were some very um, amazing clues that came around his disappearance. And so, 
it's like the whole town came out to search for him and it was it was a huge story and then what happened after the disappearance and for years and and the the resolution which i don't want to give give it away because i think it's a much more riveting story when you get to build up to the resolution people kept telling me you have to write a book this is phenomenal and and then i finally I, a writing coach friend of mine cornered me a few years ago and said okay it's time to write this story and i'm going to help you and that's when it started and the there's some very uh, common themes in the book like illiteracy my brother was a challenged reader and that's part of you learn why i turn to developing this program to help people like my brother and so there are themes of illiteracy. You get to find out some, some of the things that can happen to people who are illiterate. And uh, also there's themes of drug and alcohol abuse, which I think are very powerful. One of the things that I'd like people to understand is that I'm an avid reader and I love to read, but I don't want to read a downer book. I like a book that inspires me and I learn from, and so that's what I wrote. It's a book that has humor all through it. Even though it has a, it's a tragic story, it has humor and um, lightness, inspiration, and magic. It's a magical story, what happened. And now we have this reading program, really, because of my brother's disappearance. Final question, Narda. Where can folks go? to check out more about the Nardagani reading program or find your book to purchase? So my book is on Amazon. And if you Google Narda Pitkethley, or if you Google Amazon and then type in search Narda Pitkethley, it pops right up. It's the one with the, with the man on the front of it and purples and colors. And um, so that's a good place. And then Nardagani.com, our website, is full of information. We just launched a master class on our website under how it works and it's free. And I, I take you through about 25 minutes of teaching you how we teach the program, how the symbols work. And also, we also, I also show you the program so that you can see the pronunciation piece and the, and the writing. There's also a writing stroke order piece that's very helpful for people. And then the TEDx talk gives you an overview in less than 10 minutes, a terrific overview of the program. And people have found they can Google Ted X Narda and it pops right up. Awesome. Oh, and our Great Facebook. It. We also have our Facebook page, Nardagani Facebook. <laughs> awesome. Great information. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. Um, again, Narda Piketley, who is the founder and CEO of the Nardagani Reading Program. You can check her out at www.nardagani.com and also her book, Nardagani, a memoir, finding light in the shadow of a brother's disappearance. Narda, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you, Wallace. It's been a pleasure.